And with his legal bills piling up, Donald Trump is turning to religion of sorts for some help. Though not in the traditional way, more culty, actually. In a social media post yesterday, the presumptive 2024 Republican nominee announced he is hawking his own version of the Bible. Take a look. I'm proud to be partnering with my very good friend, Lee Greenwood, who doesn't love his song, God Bless the USA, in connection with promoting the God Bless the USA Bible. This Bible is the King James Version and also includes our founding father documents. Yes, the Constitution, which I'm fighting for every single day. Christians are under siege, but must protect content that is pro-God. We love God. I'm proud to endorse and encourage you to get this Bible. We must make America pray again. I think you all should get a copy of God Bless the USA Bible now and help spread our Christian values with others. Trump's version of the good book is selling for $60 before shipping. This, of course, follows his other business ventures, such as Trump Stakes, Trump Water, Trump University. Last month, he also unveiled Trump-branded sneakers going for $400 a pair. And in December, he even started selling pieces of the suit he was wearing when he got indicted last summer. The Trump Bible website states that none of the profits will go toward his 2024 campaign. There is no mention, however, about whether the money might go toward his legal fees. Let's bring in MSNBC contributor and author of the book, How the Right Lost Its Mind, Charlie Sykes. He has a new piece for MSNBC.com entitled Republicans Are Not As United Behind Trump As They Appear. I definitely want to hear about that, but I first want to get you and Sam in on this. This Bible seems to me to be a new level of culty. Um, it also, if you listen to his comments, it's painful, but I did. Um, he blames America, America for everything he's done to it, <laughs> which is speci especially culty. Um, what can be said, Charlie, to a person who hears that, gets out their credit card, and purchases a God Bless the USA Bible? Well, the first thing you say is, oh, my God. I mean, it is not only culty, it is grifty. It is so much on brand for Donald Trump. I mean, obviously, he's, he's playing on the themes of, you know, that I am the defender of Christianity, um, encouraging the Christian nationalists out there. But I think the thing that you can't take your eyes off of is that is that he's commodifying the Bible during Holy Week, that he's selling it for $60. Mm. And this money might go oh. to pay some of the legal fees for for um, his relationship with a porn star uh, that he that he paid off, um, you know, let us pray here. I mean, the cynicism here is is not, is not a new story. But can I just remind people that Donald Trump has been asked in the past, "What is your favorite uh, verse of the Bible?" And he has no idea. He talks about two Corinthians. Uh, he's been asked by faith leaders, "Do you ever ask for forgiveness? Do you ever pray?" And not really. And yet. You know, conservative evangelical Christians have swallowed this, and so I don't expect that they're not going to swallow. You know, that they're that they're not, that they're going to draw the line when it comes to this. But this is so much Donald Trump. I mean, it is such an artifact of this political moment, where this this Elmer Gantry grifter, who sells who you know who sells the golden tennis shoes is now selling the Bible to Christians at this particular moment. And uh, you cannot make it up. And this is, this is, the, this is Earth 2.0. And, and Sam, Charlie makes the, <laughs> the important point here that while he's on trial for paying off a porn star for an affair he had while his wife was home with their newborn child, he's asking his supporters to buy his version of the Bible for $60, undoubtedly going to pay legal fills, legal fees for that same, that same case and, and many others. The, the idea that Donald Trump espouses, quote, Christian values, as he said in that ad, is ludicrous on its face, but people are going to buy the thing. We know that. 
It is quite the contrast, right? The gag order filed by the Bible uh, uh, video. Um, you know, this has been a uh, something that's been uh, evident with Trump for a while now. There was sort of an infamous poll in the... Uh, uh, 2016 uh, race where uh, white evangelical voters were asked for about their support for Trump uh, both before and then after uh, the revelation of the Stormy Daniels uh, allegations and and their support went up uh, which was the shocking thing I, I suppose it says more about the voters than Trump um, Obviously, this is part, as Charlie said, of what Trump does. Uh, he sold everything from steaks to Bibles to water uh, to shoes uh, and this is just his brand, and people buy into it literally. Um, I think the other element of the story that probably should be noted is that it does raise kind of important questions about our campaign finance system. Not not the, the stakes in, in the Bible so much as uh, he's going public. Uh, his company, his True Social, is going public right now on the stock exchange, and it has raised a huge amount of money in valuation. That money will be used, likely, by Trump to uh, pay off not just his uh, legal uh, bills, but potentially he could use that money uh, to help his own campaign efforts. And that really does raise questions about the porous holes that we have in our campaign finance system and how easy it is, frankly, for not the people who buy Bibles, but for the people who want to influence Trump with huge checks to get around our laws and get money to a candidate. And Charlie, Trump is also clearly showing some anxiety about the state of this campaign. He was on True Social Early this morning, I note 1.52 a.m., a post from mm -hmm. Donald Trump attacking Robert F. Kennedy Jr., suggesting that he's very liberal and clearly concerned that RFK Jr. may draw some support uh, from Trump himself. Um, he also, we were, as you write in your new piece for MSNBC, has made little to no effort to actually unify the Republican Party. He was rebuked by his former vice president, Mike Pence. And we recall that when Nikki Haley dropped out of the race earlier this month, she implored him, make the party a bigger tent. Try to support, to court my supporters, even suggesting she herself might come along. But he has made zero effort to do so. No, and I don't think that he necessarily will, uh, given his demeanor. And, you know, I mean, you know, the caveat here is, of course, you know, we, we've all seen the polls. We know how Republican, the Republican grassroots is rallying around Donald Trump, that he has complete control over the party and the RNC. But I do think it's, it is notable when you look at the number of United States senators now who are saying that they're not going to vote for Donald Trump. You have Lisa Murkowski being the latest. You have Todd Young, um, uh, Bill Cassidy. Uh, Mike Rounds declined to say that he was going to vote for him. I mean, they, you add you add in uh, Mitt Romney. Um, and one of the questions I think people you know should you know, should ponder for a moment. I mean, imagine if this was the Democratic Party. If this many members of the U.S. Senate were saying, "Yeah, well, you know, we're not going to support uh, Joe Biden's uh, bid for re-election." Um, but at the larger frame, though is you look at the fact that I, I don't know in American history when this many leading members of the party, including his former vice president, including his former chiefs of staff, have come out publicly and said, we work with him, we've seen him up close, and we're not supporting him again. Uh, as far as I can tell, the only living Republican nominee for president or vice president in this century that is supporting Donald Trump is Sarah Palin. Um, everybody else is out, whether you're talking about Dick Cheney, whether you're talking about uh, George Bush, whether you're talking about Mitt Romney or Paul Ryan, none of them have lined up. I don't think that there's any parallel in American history. So while on one level, Donald Trump has complete control of the Republican Party, there are these cracks and the Biden administration is the Biden campaign is beginning to exploit this. All right, Charlie Sykes, thank you so much for coming on this morning. And hey, everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the Cloud icon and enjoy it.